Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz trumpeter, flugelhornist, and composer Michael Sarian. This is the second interview within a few months to delve further into this world of COVID-19 and his thoughts on the new 2020 CD, New Aurora. It was released on September 4th, 2020. We treated this conversation like a true jazz improv session, and great things came about. Enjoy. We could just kind of pick up and just kind of move forward a little bit, kind of post-release and and that kind of a thing. So I'll, we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll just treat this as a jazz gig and just go totally improv and just do parts <laughs> and see where it goes. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. All right. Well, hey, thanks again. It's great to catch up with you again. I appreciate it. Thank you, time. man. Yeah, I, I, I really dug the, the, the interview. I loved how it came out. Yeah, thank you. Thank cool. You. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess the one thing is just, just to kind of elaborate a little bit more on, you know, re- your release and, you know, the, the time in this world that we're going through right now. So let me ask you this. When did you, you know, you started constructing this album, obviously, before the pandemic. When... Yeah. Around March, did you realize the world was coming to a halt? And kind of what are your feelings now as we kind of spiral further into this and there's still a great unknown as far as, like, when live music's going to happen or when you can have that live in-person CD release? It's quite the question to start out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's a good one. And, yeah, definitely, like, so, yeah, obviously, as you said, this it wasn't, like, I didn't decide to release an album, like, a month ago. Um, I remember talking to Matthew um, from Ears and Eyes Records at one point and just, you know, see what he was, like how other artists were um, dealing with it, like if they thought, if they were talking about postponing the release or not or what, how they were just, just to kind of get a feel for, you know, what the right move was, if there was a, a move to make. But I think um, on the one hand, I mean, I like, you know, I like getting things over and done with, so to speak, you know. Um, um, like, I reached out to Matthew in, in I think, January, and then we set the release for September. So that's a pretty quick turnover as far as, uh, you know, album releases go. So, like, I like, I like, I don't like waiting, you know, like 18 months or whatever. So, on the one hand, I wanted to release it. On the other hand, he's, he's said, no, like, people are, you know, people need, you know, music now. They're probably consuming more than they were before. So, yeah, we just decided to go ahead with it. And it was, I mean, I, I think we talked about this, but, you know, it's been very different. So I think as far as a live in-person release, I'm hoping, who knows, maybe it'll be like a second album and we'll, I'll be presenting both of them together. But I am hoping for next year at some point, you know, maybe summer or fall, things will get better. I'm already, you know, trying to book stuff like festivals for next year. Um, I figured, you know, it's easier to reschedule than to just book from scratch. So I don't know, man. It's all we can do is hope, hope for the best, you know? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much where we're at. Um, you know, you've gotten you've gotten a pretty good reception with this album. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, it came out on September 4th. Talk to me a little bit about what you've heard, what the feedback's been. Kind of now that it's out during a pandemic, like what, what has been kind of your feeling versus other projects you've been involved with? It's it's weird. Um, I'm, I'm really, really happy with the project. I'm really proud of it. Um, and I also talked talk about this with some other people and yeah, the reception has been great, you know, I mean, um, getting a lot of airplay, great reviews, but, um, it's like I mentioned, like everyone's, um, people are consuming more, you know, like more music. Is it like they're, they'll go through music faster because they can actually sit down. But, um, I think as a result, like there's so much music being released, you know? And so it's, it's a bit of you know it's 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 great, but on on the on the side of like just you know getting your getting your voice out there there's more um i don't wanna say like noise because everyone like there's a lot of great stuff coming out but i think i think there's more stuff coming out than in normal years i mean you can also as like on your side of things you can also probably 
you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's like the feedback I've been getting, you know. So it's it's been great, um, but at the same time, the, there's like a lot of other stuff going on, you know. And added to the fact that I can't go out on tour and like play, kind of it's like just like, and this is also just like you know being living on like alone and during a pandemic and like alone with my with my thoughts and like being self defeatist. It's like am I just in the blimp on the radar, or or are people actually listening to this? You know, so it's it's weird, man. Like you can't go out and get that that live in person reaction and warmth that like we're used to and that we want and that we need as you know performers. So it's. It's been challenging, but at the same time, it's been great because I'm, as I said, I'm really happy with that. I'm really proud of the music and, and the whole thing. As a radio person, I've consistently gotten CDs in the mail, and it's been consistent since mid early March, and it hasn't stopped. There was a little time there where it was a little slower, and there were some people saying, yeah, we may not have the CD format anymore. We may go digital, but I've gotten more CDs lately, and it's been so welcoming. It's been so good, and it's almost kind of a metaphor for the jazz world like the jazz world always finds a way Mm. to remain relevant to not stop doing something because they're told they're supposed to do it and they do it because it's the right thing to do there's been an adaptability obviously with a lot of live streams and things like that but i think that's been the thing about the jazz idiom is that there's always this survival thing it's almost kind of like the cockroach it's just like it comes back stronger it's like you you're not going to get rid of it it's going to come back and it's going to be stronger than ever before and that's the way i view you guys i think you guys have always done that and i think this pandemic um if we weren't really aware that the pandemic was going on right now and i was just continually getting mail i wouldn't have known a difference between now and then wow wow i mean yeah that's great that's i mean that's that's um, i'm happy to hear that you know um People are still producing, and it's different, obviously. And I think when things get back to normal, if hopefully they do, um, you know, it'll be more of a. It won't be a, like a 180 back to what it used to be. I think you know, um, yeah. People, I mean, we're all definitely learning new skills, man. Like, I'm recording at home, and I'm like, where, whereas I used to record at home, and it would be like, okay, now I'm. You know, I'm a bit more confident in my recording skills and my mixing skills. You know, so like I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens when we, when we, like on the other side of this, you know, and see how, how like once we have all these skills that are at this position, you know, of what we used to be able to do plus what we learned during quarantine. So it's going to be interesting, man. Yeah. You know, the one thing that we didn't discuss before, which I had kind of talked about earlier on in the pandemic, was that, you know, a lot of those cats coming out of the World War II movement and racial unrest, you know, a lot of clubs were burnt down when John Coltrane was making A Love Supreme. I mean, it was just, it was, it was Armageddon and it was chaos here in this, in this country. And what came out of it was bebop and came, and what came out of it were, it were, were movements that weren't motivated by commercialism. I mean, it wasn't like Verve or Blue Note said, hey, we need to invent this new way of imagining jazz. People just did it because they felt it. So I keep hearing all of the musicians kind of saying, it's going to be interesting to hear what's going to come out of this. And we're already past that honeymoon phase of this, so to speak. I mean, we've been yeah. in this for six months and things are coming out. So we're experiencing it now. I mean, what are your thoughts on, on that whole notion? Yeah, I mean, that's a good good way of um, looking at it because... Yeah, I mean, if there was ever no money in jazz, you know, now it's like, well, even even more so, you know. So I think now, I don't know. It's, I mean, maybe that's a, a unfair and not a completely correct statement, but I'm thinking, yeah, people may maybe now where they're just more concentrated on, you know, making and creating stuff that they they feel more connected to. I mean, because we're all feeling more and different than new emotions. And I think as, you know, artists, musicians, whatever you want to call it, I mean, it's natural for us to want to transmit that through what we create. So, and it's not like, oh, before, whatever, I'm just like, because we we were so, maybe, unless, you know, unless you're personally going through something, 
you're, you know, you still want to write music and it's like, oh, I'll just write a ballad or I'll just write this and that because it's like all these emotions that you can kind of fall back on and like you, already, you, you can already identify and now it's all these new things and it's all these new emotions and new feelings and it's like, well, okay, how, to tra- how do I transmit this? How do I transmit that? That I know that I'm feeling and then I know that a lot of other people are feeling as well. So it's going to be I think it's it, you know similar to bebop as you mentioned it's going to be uh something like that where we come out and it's or even now because as you said we're, we're over the honeymoon phase um people are going to start connecting with with I don't know if it's going to be a new sound but like it's going to be it's going to be something that people are going to connect with because we're all on the same boat you know we're all in the same boat so um yeah I know I've already started writing new stuff and um yeah, it's it's. I'm 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 really excited for <laughs> when we can you know all kind of share our music again in a more normal way and kind of and also you know consume it in a more normal way, um, live you know in in person in real time. So yeah, it's gonna be. I'm looking forward to. It. I think we all are. Absolutely. So, I guess my final question is: you know, your album is out now and it's being consumed. What do you hope the listener gets out of this experience? I mean, music is always a very deeply personal thing, and, you know, especially in this time and in our world, what do you hope people feel when they get to the end of this experience of this latest project, Aurora? I hope they feel like listening to it again. Huh. That's interesting, man. I've, I guess I've been selfish. I've never thought of how I want other people to feel when, I, when they listen to my music. And you know, it's always been like... Um, well, it makes, so, yeah, it's an interesting uh, question, you know, as opposed to like, I, I need to, I need to transmit something. It's more like, I need to transmit something and I hope the other person gets it and I hope they feel a certain way. Mm. I don't know, I got a message the other day from a friend and he's, um, um, he said, you know, I just, uh, listened to your album and I heard, and I had, I listened to it twice. Uh, so like, that's, that was like a nice feeling, you know. Um, I hope people like it. They it it speaks to them. I hope people, um, you know, it's. I don't like. I like. Um, how do I put this? You know, I like um, like having like giving someone the feeling that they went on like a, a, on a trip or on a, on a journey. You know, it's like I like different sounds, different rhythms, different. And I mean, think maybe that was more prevalent in my previous albums, but I still kind of wanted to, you know, um, transmit that to a certain extent in this new one. So I hope they're not bored. I hope they can, you know, they find themselves surprised, you know, throughout each listen. Perfect. Michael, I think we did pretty good here with a little improv. Nice, nice. Yeah, (laughs) that was good. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, hey, thank you, man. Good luck with uh, as the album continues to, to, to spread into the world. And I, I can't wait to see you all out there. I, I can tell you from a personal standpoint here in Kansas City, there is a uh, pianist, Jackie Myers, that has spearheaded mm. something called drive-in concerts. And I have been fortunate enough to see a handful of them, Bobby Watson and some other, like Kansas City Jazz Orchestra and some other groups. And it's just been really uh, yeah. wonderful to see, you know, safe, socially distanced, that whole thing, but just to see musicians mm-hmm. doing live things, it's going to be great when it goes back into full force. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, same here. We, we've, we there's been some live stream stuff, um, obviously, like I played one last, speaking of album release, I did play an album release live stream last month at the Soapbox Gallery, but um, as far as in person, um, there are a few places, um, um, there's one place in, called Culture Labs in Long Island City. I'm playing one, not with my band, but with a, a large ensemble called the New York Show Harmonic uh, later in the month. And again, yeah, it's like it's outdoors and there's circles spray painted on the floor with like social distancing, <laughs> you know, um, I guess barriers, um, which is just the, the circles. So... Yeah, it's some sort of normalcy is already popping up, you know. So, but I hope I hope someday can be able to come out of Kansas City and play over there now. Yeah, absolutely. Let me know when you do. I'd love to come out and meet you and cover the show. So, um, definitely, it'd be great. But yeah, definitely, it's been nice to catch back up with you. Uh, good luck with mm-hmm. everything, and thanks again, man. 
Thank you, man. Same. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Canada, America, New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Michael for his time, music, and insight. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.